Hey everyone! Have you ever wondered how to copy or clone a Linux system, but all of the online resources presented some third-party solution and didn't bother to explain the process itself? How about copying virtual machines between hypervisors? Do you also hate complexity, technology and carrots? I have no idea whether this video is for you. Okay, now that we broke the ice a bit, there are two ways of copying an OS. You can either do a full copy of the hard drive on the block device level, or copy the files from a mounted file system. None of those methods is better than the other. Their strengths and use cases are just different, and we'll dive into that a bit more right now. Copying the whole hard drive is often the easiest and fastest. Why easiest? Well, because after cloning drive one-to-one, -one, partition tables, UUIDs, UEFI, GRAB, etc. are all preserved. No need to modify anything. Most often it just works. As for fastest, there is a small asterisk sign here. Copying a drive sequentially on a block device level will often give you fastest read speeds, but remember that you will be copying the whole drive, even if your system only occupies a small percentage of it. Just to be sure, I wanted to make this super extra special clear. For block device copy, you need disk of the exact same size or larger. Very often I'm dealing with an offline VM migration, also between hypervisors like VMware to Xen or Xen to KVM, etc. And a block device copy gives me the least amount of headache. I have also mentioned this method in my video about migration of a physical server to a Docker container. Okay. So, if a block device copy is so amazing and can utilize full hard drive read and write potential, what can file copy offer to us? Frankly speaking, quite a lot. It's very versatile. Let's say you want to migrate a physical server to a VM, but you want to change partitioning schema, because your slash var directory lives on a separate 2TB hard drive, but takes up only 10 gigs. Maybe you want to completely change everything and have everything live on a single root partition. Or the other way around, but with added LVM. You can't make such changes with block level copy. This method does have some drawbacks. First of all, copying lots of files individually can often be a lot slower, even on NVMe drives. Secondly, you need to prepare everything on the target you're copying to. Partitions, format the file system, make necessary changes to the FS tab, root into the cloned OS, reinstall grab and some other stuff I probably forgot about at the moment. So if you want to choose a method best for you, say it with me. It depends. Some of you may ask, would this work for Windows or Mac? Short answer is, it depends. Most often, you'll be fine with block device copy but licensing on those systems is very tightly coupled with the hardware. You may be lucky enough to boot only to be greeted with OS activation pop-up. I'll be migrating my source VM to two targets. I'm going to use GRML Live ISO, which is my little favorite Debian-based Swiss Army knife for such tasks. But you'll be fine with pretty much any Live ISO, Debian, Ubuntu, Arc, whatever. Everything will be done over the network without any intermediate data storage. Be careful when executing any commands as you can easily overwrite your data. Measure twice, cut once. First, reboot your source and target systems into Live ISO and identify your drives using lsblk command. Configure their network interfaces if required and make sure the SSH server is running on at least the target system and you can log on directly as root. From here on out, the path diverges. First, we'll go through the block device copy. Block device copy is really simple. On the source system, execute the... That's it, it's that simple. You are telling DD to copy a data from a block device using as big block size as possible. By default, DD uses smallest size possible, which tanks the transfer speed. Then, pipe it by the PV command which shows you a nice progress bar and can be totally omitted. Then, you pipe it through SSH, which connects over the network to your target and executes their instance of DD, which saves whatever it got over the STDIN over the network to their drive. With block size parameter also specified. It just so happens that here both drives are named SDA, but you need to check on your own what your drives are called in your system. You can see me setting root password and starting SSH server. 
After that, we are back to source VM. Let the block copy begin. Whole thing took 6 minutes at approximately 90 MB per second. On target VM, we can see that kernel recognized new partition table and our disk layout is the same as it was on source. Reboot and enjoy copied system. You might be tempted to try and compress your data on the fly, for example like this. Very often the compression and the decompression can become a single core bottleneck and it's not worth the trouble unless you really know what you are doing or your bandwidth is very tight. Now, for the files method. We are back at our source VM. We need to mount our OS into a cohesive file system. And let me do just that. Here I know where my root and my home partitions are, but you might want to double check. Anyway, mount everything as it should be. I also need to prepare the target. Just for the purposes of this example, we'll be streamlining our partitioning schema and on the target everything will be copied to a single large partition. I need to create my desired partition schema, so I'll do that using fdisk. If you want GPT, use gdisk. Notice that in this example there is no EFI partition since this VM does not use UEFI. Now I can choose a file system for my new destination. Remember that if you choose some exotic file system that your OS didn't have support installed for, it won't work. Back on the source, the command will run looks like this. If you want to know what the arguments do, read the man pages. It is your homework. Remember that rsync needs to be installed on both live ISO systems. Or present, whatever. But really, do read the man pages. Long story short, these arguments tell rsync to copy everything as is and preserve as many attributes as possible. After it's done, verify that on target VM everything is where it should be. We need to perform some additional steps on the target after the copying is done. First, we need to truth into our system. In order to do that properly, we need to mount additional special directories. Proc, sys and dev are a must and must be mounted with bind parameter. If you need to perform some emergency fixes or package installs, your package manager should be working fine in this environment, which is super cool. Ok, identify your drive and install group onto it. This install lacked vim, so I'm installing it now. Modify your fs tab. Like I said, now everything is on single partition, so we can remove line dedicated for mounting home but we will still need the UUID of our new root partition. I am grabbing and injecting it into fstab using a mix of blkid, grab and awk. Then I am properly putting everything nicely together. Now, just to be sure, I'll regenerate initramfs and update group again. After that, reboot and enjoy. Let me show you that now everything is on a single partition. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you like the content, so you will subscribe, like, do everything like that. And I hope I'll see you next time. The constant barrage of Slack notifications disrupts deep focus. Every time a notification pops up, it pulls me out of the zone, forcing a context switch that not only slows down my work, but also increases the likelihood of errors. It's exasperating to be in the middle of debugging a complex issue or developing a critical feature, only to be interrupted by a ping demanding immediate attention for something trivial.